Sports Gig, on top of having a weekly one-hour show for New York One TV and a weekly column in the New York Post just to scrape up my 910 bucks a month for rent. Hard work does pay off, though. In the 25 years since my brother, or my baby sister as I still refer to him, just to piss him off, obviously, couldn't shut the bathroom door in my apartment, I became one of the top inside sports reporters on the planet as Fox Sports' NFL insider. I've had the biggest scoops in NFL history involving the most well-known names in football, including perhaps the biggest, the Spygate video that caught the New England Patriots cheating. I've covered 25 Super Bowls, been a part of eight Super Bowl broadcasts, got inducted into the Television Hall of Fame with Terry Bradshaw, Howie Long, Strahan, Jimmy Johnson, and Kurt Menefee and the entire Fox NFL Sunday team. I created the first mixed martial arts cross-training program for pro athletes and trained over a 1,000 NFLers, fighters, and pro athletes. I became an actor, and I use the term very loosely, and a regular cast member on the highest-rated comedy on HBO, Ballers, with my little niece, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, for five seasons. I opened Unbreakable Performance Center, which quickly became named the most elite gym in America by Yahoo Health, and this one's the most important one. I became a voice for mental health, a mental health warrior, if you will, and saved the lives of countless combat veterans and retired athletes through my charity, MVP, Merging Vets and Players. I have coached people out of suicide and hopelessness every week. I work my ass off to beat down the negative stigma often associated with mental health issues. Look, God has blessed me with the ability to communicate, to be authentic, and to relate to any and all, and in turn, I have made it my life's mission to lift up others. Sounds like a dream life, right? I mean, I'm still waiting to wake up in fifth grade and find out that none of this shit happened. What most of you don't know is that I accomplished all this while living in my own painful dark cell of depression and anxiety. Mental health, that's the hip, hot thing to talk about these days, and it's about damn time, to be honest. But I've been privy to the painful reality of this issue for far too long. Despite the laughs on TV and the crazy, riotous stories I'm fond of telling, I have lived life in the gray since I was a kid. <sighs> life in the gray. This phrase has found its way into my daily vocabulary since I first heard it and felt like it exactly described how it feels to be me. I wake up every single morning convinced the sky's falling. And it's this heavy sadness that exhausts me. It drags me down. Eventually, it drowns me. And even with meds, the other four-letter word that's been pretty prevalent in my life, and every other form of therapy I could try, that gray has clung to me. In the last few years, I've found ways to crack through the gray and see, dare I say it, see some slivers of blue. I'm actually afraid to say I found a way to the blue because people with depression get scared to jinx it when we find something that actually works. And if you're listening to this and you're wondering what the blue feels like because you haven't seen that sliver, I absolutely fucking get you. I understand you. And I hurt for you. But most of all, I got your back. And I hope that the tools in this book help you find a way there. And in turn, I can also learn from you as we all start talking publicly about our fears and our anxieties more. Look, the world is my locker room. And my locker room is filled with a wild blend of characters who fit together in my sense of crazy that adds up to a team. So in the real world, you might never find a place where Sly Stallone, Kirstie Ennis, who's a female Marine door gunner who lost her leg in a helicopter crash, Usher, Snoop Dogg, Wiz Khalifa, Demi Lovato, and Lindsey Berg, the captain of the U.S. Olympic women's volleyball team, would all be teammates. But in my world, that's a normal Tuesday. In my world, all these different people fit beautifully together and help each other in ways you would never expect. And now, by listening to this book, you're on our team too. Being part of a team that has my back and which makes me constantly laugh has been one of the best antidotes to my depression. There's nothing lonelier than pretending everything is fine. Honesty is the cost of admission to this team, and it's the secret weapon for healing, connecting, and fighting on this journey from the gray to the blue. That's because vulnerability is true strength. If I'm vulnerable, it may inspire a teammate to be the same. It may help lift them up out of their own pit. This book is not your typical memoir. It's not your typical self-help book either. This is a journey that I'm taking with you 
with all my listeners, all my readers, all of us together.